Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. We're here in the Bruff Superior section of my garage. Now, if you've been to this website before, you know we are huge Bruff Superior uh, motorcycle enthusiasts. Bruff was a company that uh, built the epitome of motorcycles back in the 30s, probably one of the most valuable motorcycles today. I was lucky enough to get mine back in the early 80s when they weren't going for a whole lot. Uh, the company went out of business eh, just about the end of World War II, and it's been revived by a gentleman named Mark Upham. Mark is a dedicated Bruff Superior enthusiast. He set a number of records at Bonneville with his Bruff Superior bikes. Building racing motorcycles is really only for those that really love the sport because it's a tough thing to do, especially when you're a privateer, and that's what Mark has done with Bruff Superior with this bike here, the Moto GP2. Let's meet the two geniuses behind this, John Keel, Paul Taylor. Come on in, guys. All right. Now, Hi, Paul. Jay. Now, you, you're in charge of the... Uh, I'm in charge of the construction of it. Construction. So I make it. And you're mm -hmm. the designer. I am. All right. Now, as you can see, uh, it doesn't look at all like one of the vintage Bruff Superiors. You know, Mark and his boys took some uh, vintage, or at least vintage-looking Bruffs to uh, Bonneville this year and last year and set a bunch of records using basically a 60- or 80-year-old design in many cases. But this is a brand-new motorcycle, isn't it? It is, and it's pretty unique. It's the only monocoque chassis motorcycle. People have said that they are composite monocoques before, or steel monocoques or aluminium, but this is the genuine article. So it's F1 technology put into a motorcycle. And explain to people exactly what monocoque means. It means the, the chassis, the shell, is the body of the bike. Right. This, this tank structure is performing four different things. As a, a designer, we're looking for ultra lightweight. We want each component to do at least two things. As I say, in this case, it's doing four things. It's a fuel tank, it's a chassis, it's an air duct to the rear radiator, and it's what you hang the front suspension off. So that is a monocoque. Right, where, where the whole unit is the motorcycle, basically. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah there's not a lot of parts to take off. This yeah. is pretty much the whole bike. And what power plant are you using? This bike has been built specifically to race in Grand Prix right. in Moto2. And Moto2 is a spec engine class, mm -hmm. so it has a Honda 600 okay. engine. And all the bikes have the same engine. What does is, what is this monocoque weigh? Uh, the whole bike yeah. it itself weighs 315 pounds. Wow. Uh, with no fuel, but right. ready to go. So it is on the light side, and of course we see that as a competitive advantage. Sure. Now without the engine and the wheels, and the front fork, what does that monocoque weigh? Well, Jay, the monocoque is this part well, here. That's true. Yeah, this yeah. is all. And it weighs uh, 25 pounds. Wow, okay, just so, 25 pounds. Yeah, and that includes the fuel, the gas tank, and I mean, to uh, give our viewers an idea, a standard motorcycle, not monocoque, would weigh what? Uh, a comparable motor, a street motorcycle, right. for example, would be around 400 pounds. Okay, and your... Yeah. 315. Right, okay, okay. So it's significantly lighter and it's actually a little bit under the minimum weight. Yeah. How many gallons? Well, after one of your lunches, yeah, yeah, uh, that's we're right. not going to have any problems. How many? How, uh, the how the many gas tank is it's about six gallons. Oh, it is that big? It's six yeah. gallons. Wow. Okay. Well, and one of the reasons is here, obviously, is the filler and that's right. the top of the gas tank. And the bottom of the gas tank is right down. There. Oh, I see. So obviously using an electric fuel pump. Yes, we, we use a fuel pump, and so the gas volume is very much in the center of the bike. I and see. And we did that deliberately so that as the race goes on, the fuel level drops, the weight distribution back to front remains constant. So the handling remains constant. Oh, I see. Oh, that's so very So that clever, was one it? of our design features. How long did it take you to design this bike? Well, uh, I think the important thing is testing as well to yeah. get it to the point. Right. And we've been working on it for about three years. Okay. And so uh, quite a considerable time. From when we, yeah, first yeah. hand drawings. And what, is your, what, is your, what is are both hand. of your backgrounds in motorcycling besides this? Well, I'm just an enthusiast. Oh, okay. I just love to ride. Right, right. And right. Uh, I ride every day, okay. ride to work. And, so uh, you never work for any of the big companies or anything? Uh, no, not myself. But John is a different kettle I'm of fish. I'm a freelance motorcycle designer, so right. I started off with Triumph. 
went freelance, I've worked with Buell, and I like, oh. like your red firebolt, that yeah, was one yeah. of mine, along with Eric. Oh, very cool. But again, innovation. The great thing with working with Eric was you come up with an idea, let's put the oil in the swing arm. Yeah. yeah. Triumph would say, you're fired. Right. Eric would say, no, tell me more, let's yeah, try something yeah. else. And that's distilled into this bike here. We knew we couldn't match the guys from Honda or Calix or right, Suter. Right. That a small company like ourselves would have to kind of go around the back and come up with lightweight construction and some new interesting features. This is what I love about the English. There's all these little guys hidden away doing all these genius things. <laughs> but that's what it's great. I mean, that the fact that an enthusiast can come up with this level of design and engineering is, is uh, pretty amazing, the two of you working together. So when did well, you hook up with Mark Upham and Bruff Superior? Well, uh, that was... Um, you, you mentioned earlier that Mark is bringing back right. the, uh, the brand um, to the market. And as we see from your poster behind here, mm -hmm. that uh, George Bruff had a racing heritage right. and liked to uh, develop his products on the racetrack. Mark had a similar idea, right. and uh, this was a, a project which he felt was very much in the spirit of George. And so now we're collaborating to bring uh, it back to the racetrack. And uh, you've taken it out to the track already? Oh yes, we've been, uh, it's been on the racetrack for a couple of years. Uh, we've been developing it with Sean Higby. He's our development rider. It's been a couple of issues, I have yeah. to admit, where yeah. we've learned some stuff. Right, right. Um, and, but that's uh, the fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's a challenge. It's a problem. It's solving problems. So we've, uh, we've dealt with those, and now we feel it's ready uh, to go to the grid. And we have some carbon fiber here you want to show us. This is, this is uh, pre-preg carbon fiber. So this is the material that we uh, made the bike from. And what this is, it has the resin mixed in with it. If you look at the back there, you I can see. feel it's kind of sticky. And that's the resin and the hardener, and that's the carbon. And it's mixed in the optimum ratio for strength. I see to uh, fiber. So there's no excess fiber, no excess resin. And what do we have here? This is... Well, I wanted to show you this because this is a, a test sample because uh, we, to understand the stiffness, it's uh, all related to the number of layers and the core. So I wanted to show you this because this is actually what this section, the monocoque, looks okay. like if I you see. were to cut through. It's that thick? It is that thick. It's oh, uh, wow. all the way over. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a Nomex core here, which makes it very, not only very strong, but very stiff. Yeah. And... <laughs> break that. Well, yeah. the other thing is it must I'll survive a, a penetration right. test for the yeah. FIM, because, of course, that is our gas tank as well as the chassis. Right, right. So they don't want that in the event of a, an accident in any way rupturing. It's a split or rupture yeah. as well. And so as we move over the bike, we have different thicknesses mm -hmm. uh, of this. So it starts, that's with just one layer. Right. Uh, this is actually 24 layers. Oh, I see. It's 24 of these, eh? Yeah, it's 24 okay. of those. So this is a lightweight panel, you right. know, because it's just a cover. So this is four layers. Still. And this one here, um, which one you meant? Oh, that one. Okay, that is, is just, that's very thin. Isn't that's it? just yeah. two layers. Yeah, yeah. So every component has different numbers of layers and the fibers running in different directions to give it the stiffness that the rider is telling us right. that we need. So you mentioned about what is the overall stiffness compared. It's something that you have to tune with yeah. the construction. Hence, we've been at it for a couple of years. Right, right. And actually, that swing arm that we have on the bike now is number five. That's right. The swing arm is carbon fiber, of course. I mean, look at yeah. that. Wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. So uh, that... You know, that, uh, we put a lot of work into that, yeah, and that was yeah. the main uh, issue. The front suspension is a bit unusual because it's supported by a single wishbone pivoting oh, here okay. and comes through to clamp here on the fork. So it makes a very stiff structure right. in the forks. And as you can see, we have the full uh, Grand Prix Brembo brakes, right. so the best brakes you can buy. It brakes really, really hard. But, Jay, try... Feel the suspension in terms of... It's, little, it's, not, it's not hard not or stiff. stiff. At all. No, it's no. not stiff at all because the A-arm takes out a component oh, of I see. compression. Oh, okay. So we're able to run 
yeah. much softer springs. That's almost like a street bike. Yeah, and, and yet this is a full-on yeah. uh, racing wow. bike. And by running lighter springs, we get more grip yeah. from the front tire. Uh, one thing that John initiated was uh, an aerodynamic study uh, for the bike. And traditionally, of course, that's done in an air tunnel. Right. But these days, it's all computer. Right. So we had a, a CFD study done uh, to try and optimize the aerodynamics. And it was very useful for us to really point out things that were obvious that we never <laughs> thought yeah, of. Yeah. So there's kind of this where we talk about an uh, aerodynamic study right. that John uh, initiates to optimize the right. uh, airflow. And uh, what this shows for us is there's a low pressure area here in the duct, the blue area. And so we change the shape of this duct. So okay. based on this data. And the air runs through all the way up here to the back, doesn't it? Yeah, all through the way through. through. Sort of a ram air effect. To the radiator. Yeah. To the radiator, which is the back, the back here. Boy, here. that is very clever. Oh, I see. Look at this. The whole rear section here is the radio. Yeah. So the idea is you, know, you have low pressure behind yeah, yeah. the bike and then it actually <laughs> sucks wow. the, uh, the air through. This tunnel runs all the way through, through through the middle of the fuel, right? kind of like the hole in a donut, yeah. out to the radiator. And one thing that John... Uh, so there's the top of the duct and it is <coughs> surrounded by fuel. Yeah, yeah. We were having a donut. We were saying, how are we going to get the air through the fuel tank? Yeah. And we right. came up with the donut because somebody was eating a donut. Boy, mm. all these clever little touches you don't see when you first look at the bike. Yeah. Well, I think George Bruff would be very proud, gentlemen. Well, this thank is, you. This is just the kind of thing that he liked, you know. But I think it's wonderful that uh, you guys are doing this, and it's a small company, and it's bringing back a great name in motorcycling. And vintage bikes are cool, but uh, to see this kind of technology in this level is uh, really good. Gentlemen, thank you very much. We shall watch for you on the track. Cool. Good thank luck, you. Guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. See you next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>